going to talk today about some back pain and leg pain, particularly people that have pain going down the back of their leg. It's a pretty common problem. This is what we, tra we call true sciatica pain. Uh, sciatica is one of those words that we use a little too freely. People refer to any leg pain as sciatica pain, but it's a very specific nerve that does run down the back of the leg. Super common problem. Uh, generally, as sciatica worsens, we feel that pain go further down the leg. As it gets better, it comes back towards the back because the problem is coming from the back. Now, there are some people that are going to have a different presentation, and these people are going to say that, oh, I have pain right here, and they're going to point to that spot right in the small of their back there, or, or slightly below it. Um, that is a slightly different presentation. Uh, a lot of times those people will have pain that comes down outside of the leg, or pain that kind of wraps around and into the groin. Uh, that's not exactly sciatica pain. Uh, what we're talking about sciatica pain is that pain down the back of the leg as it gets worse, whether it's through activity, position, resting positions even. Uh, it starts at the butt, starts working to the back of the thigh, down to the back of the calf, all the way down to the foot. So important things about that is to remember that uh, when the pain travels further, it means it's getting worse. So if you're in a position, generally sitting is a common position for a lot of people, uh, if that pain starts to travel further down your leg, you're making it worse, you need to change what you're doing, get out of that position. The opposite of that is true also. If that pain starts to move back up the leg, right, the foot starts to feel better, if the calf starts to feel better, and then you're only feeling pain in the back of the thigh or into the butt, um, that's, a, that's an improving symptom, so we wanna follow that pattern. So one of the things we wanna do, a uh, pretty common way to look at things, after we do an interview, after we get a, a, a subjective description of the way things are presenting, how long it's been, and, and how it presents for you. Uh, remember, this generally is only a one-sided issue. Uh, it's not common to have both sides affected, at least not at the same time. Some people will have uh, a little bit of back and forth, one side's affected, the other side is, and that's really something more going on at the back, and there's some other things to look at there. But for people that are generally having that one-sided back of the leg pain, one of the things we wanna look at is repeated motion testing. That's exactly what it sounds like. We take a motion, we do it, several times in a row, 10 seems to be a pretty standard number, and we see, does that motion make it get better, worse, or stay the same? So a couple of motions that we're gonna do is we're first gonna do just a forward flexion motion. We're gonna have them bend forward within their limits. And they might do a forward bend, come on up, and they can tell us better or worse or the same. Now we would have them do that 10 times, and as they go through that repetition of it, they should have some sort of presentation, okay? Other motions we're gonna do is a backwards bend, so we're gonna have them put their hands on their uh, low back or the top of their butt, and they're just gonna do a bit of a backwards bend repeatedly 10 times. We can also have them do a side bend motion, so they're gonna slide down the outside of their leg, make sure that we're not bending forward or arching back with this, but it's purely a side bend motion, 10 times to one side, better or worse the same, 10 times to the other side, better or worse the same. Uh, you could do, generally do this with rotation, but usually um, I'll find somebody that has an improvement with a certain position or a, a, a worsened uh, reaction to some positions and we want to use that so anything that makes it worse we want to avoid anything that makes it better we want to repeat and continue to do part of that repeated motion is we need to get moving right once we have that pain that's been there for a while and it's given us sensory things and it's making us uh, nervous or concerned about what the condition is that immediately turns up turn, uh, teaches our brain to not move right because when we don't move it doesn't hurt uh, we need to get back to motion so it's important that we find a motion that we can do successfully and we continue with that repeated motion. The uh, last one that does work really well is a side gliding position. So what we'll do for that is we will grab our elbows out in front of us and we'll have the person shift their hips out underneath, right? And that might be better or worse the same after 10. And then of course we'll do it to the other side. So those are some of the repeated motion things we wanna do uh, to get people to find a way that they can move comfortably. There are some things that we're gonna do laying down. So we're gonna cut the video for a moment and we'll go through a, uh, a nerve gliding exercise that might help people in the short term get rid of this problem. Uh, remember, these things are symptom modulation things. We're trying to just control that pain, try to get that quality of life uh, back to where they can be active again, but there are some movement and stability things that are gonna have to come after that. But as far as controlling the symptoms right now, these are a couple ways that we wanna uh, easily address these things that we can do uh, after our interview and give patients something they can start working towards today.